Hi everyone, it's Margaret here with 60 and Me. As we get older, there are so many words and ways that we redefine ourselves. And one of them is being a grandmother. If you're a grandmother, you're perhaps facing some of the challenges that I'm facing. And I want to talk to you today about how you can reinvent yourself, reinvent the concept of grandmother, because so many of us don't live you know, directly uh, in proximity to all of it, to our grandchildren. In my case, I, I'm close to two of them, but one is uh, in another country. And, you know, it's just a challenge to be able to connect and, um, you know, establish a a meaningful, deeper relationship. So I've got five different ways and suggestions as to how you can do this reinvention. But I want just to take a second to reflect on the whole idea of being a grandmother. Now, I know many of you are not, but perhaps you can learn something from this and just in terms of you know reaching out to people who are dear to you that are not just down, down the street, which is the way it used to be. You know, I didn't, I never knew my grandparents. I never had any memory of grandparents in my life, grandmothers or fathers. And um, so I don't have the same context, but so many of us now are living a little bit longer and we're, we're able to um, you know, see our children into their teen years and even you know, into having children themselves. So a lot of um, change just in the, the demographic, the cultural change. But do you often, if you are a grandmother and you're not um, seeing your, your grandchildren all the time, do you often wonder like, how are they gonna remember me? Like what are what are the things that stand out in your relationship with them, and maybe it's different with with um with uh, each grandchild. But I often think about this. I mean, will they remember you as the uh, the grandma that made great food? You know, the cooking grandma. Or are you the, the grandmother who uh, did crafts and uh, reading and more, you know, sort of intellectual things with them, like the, the, you know, the crafting baba? Or will they perhaps think of you as the um, kind of the travel baba or the travel grandmother that, you know, takes some places and explores? Or the nature, science-based one? You know, what, what, are, what are the things that you do that, that with your grandchildren that you know they like that you can share but your unique personality brings you know brings to them to them how will they remember you sometimes it really kind of it doesn't really scare me but it makes me concerned that I'm you know I want to leave a memorable impression I want them to remember me in a positive way but you know they're children and sometimes you've got to say no and you know or you've got to have some your value driven activities you've got to do things that you feel comfortable doing so you want them to remember you, you want to have a a legacy, but at the same time, you've got to be honest. You've got to be honest with them. You've got to be you. So here's the main, the bottom line. This is, by the way, Lois Gar Carter Crawford wrote this ar article that I'm kind of referring to. Is one of our bloggers, and she's really, really cool in her way that she, you know, describes this. The main thing, of course, is to be enthusiastic. <laughs> you know, have fun with them. Make them make them really excited to talk to you or come to see you or for you to go see them. You know, be like excited about life. Don't um, mm, I've had is don't bring your challenges and your troubles to your grandchildren because they are you know definitely dealing with their own little world i mean even my five-year-old um grandson now max is like he's changing you know he doesn't want to be with baba that much anymore i mean well he does but you know it's just like he's got his whole little world that's so exciting to him and you have to just grow with that you know as they're younger you can kind of you know maybe be more impressionable but they grow up my 14 year old uh, grandson definitely in a new world and I have to now learn a whole new way of communicating and talking and, um, you know, connecting. It's just not letters anymore. It's just as a quick text message or a WhatsApp call. Uh, so, you know, basically that's all changing and it changes with the ages. But be enthusiastic, you know, give them... Uh, you know, memories where you're teaching them something. And I just, that doesn't mean like saying, well, when I was a kid, I had to walk to school backwards five miles. And, you know, it's like they don't really they don't really care. But um, it's just, uh, you know, being uh, making taking learning opportunities. And I think I told the one about Max and his tomato plant where, you know, he said, you know, Baba, this, this tomato plant, or it, it, it wasn't growing. It was like wilting and we thought it was going to die. And then it suddenly got really strong. <laughs> and now it's the strongest plant of them all. And I said, yes, well, that's because sometimes you get strong through a little bit of a little bit hard work, a little, little struggle can help you. So, you know, taking advantage of learning opportunities, but don't sit down and try to teach them the, you know, the periodic table. Well, you could if you wanted to, they might be interested. I don't even know whether I could I'd teach that. But anywho, uh, you know, teach them and share with them. And so what are some of the things? Crafting. 
my, I mean, I think only, I'm going to be known probably as the crafting Baba because whenever, um, you know, Max and Marvel come over to me, they sit down and we, we stick things on paper. We do finger painting. We do dot painting, smudgy painting, finger paints. We do, you know, we just make stuff with balloons and um, little sticks and cook and bake things. But it's never, I mean, if you cook at my house, it's never like looking like the thing in the recipe. I mean, it's like, <laughs> it never looks like brownies. It more looks like, um, oh, I don't know, chocolate fingers. But anyway, you know, you get the point. You don't have to be perfect at this. You don't have to be an expert. But just, um, you know, crafting is super easy. Whatever you've got in, they have a crafting drawer. They just come and tip over, open the drawer and we just make stuff. Um, computers. Okay. Computers, I think uh, you may not be that uh, interested. You may not be a, a, a techie person yourself, but trust me. This is their world. If, if you've got young grandchildren or teenage grandchildren, this is the world that they're growing into. And they are already, you know, learning how to you get onto YouTube and get, you know, get on a password to get into your iPad when they're three, four, five years old. I mean, they that's their world. And I think to sort of encourage that in a positive way is a really good thing. You know, to, to give them, I mean, yes, they're on Minecraft and Xboxes and all the rest of these wonderful gadgets that, um, you know, they have access to it or, or not. I mean, you may have a family that's not so into, you know, those kind of gadgets, but, um, they, but you can just create a world for them that's a little bit, uh, alternative to that. So, but computers, um, I mean, we always go on, on, on computers for questions, you know, when, when we don't understand something, uh, like, oh, what was it we the other day? Oh, flying animals. You know, what animals can fly? And we thought, well, besides birds, you know, there's like the flying squirrels and there's the uh, sugar gliders. And we just use the computer rather than me. I knew the answers, but we had to, you know, go and look on the computer. We used it as a resource. And of course, uh, the um, AI, our artificial intelligence apps that are out now are definitely going to be in their world. So no, no point hiding it from them. This is the world. Um, travel. Um, I travel. I love traveling with my grandkids. Uh, we've been on a cruise with my older, the 14 year old, when was, and he was at 12, I think. But um, Max and Irvi are not trains all the time. We just get on a bus. We, uh, you know, just, just do something with travel. Take them with you if you can. Or if not, just watch a video together. So many great, you know, a walking tour is now you can go together and pretend you're walking the streets of, you know, I don't know, Cape Town or anywhere. And, you know, just use travel. Um, the, what do you call them? Like the um, uh, webcams are really cool. You can see what the traffic is like in, in Rome or you can see what people are doing in, in another part of the, of the world. And uh, just, you know, virtual travel is, is wonderful too. So that's another way to share. Um, a, a business uh, opportunities, uh, do little business things with them. Like not set, not set up a business or run a business, but, you know, take them to markets, tell them how people, how it works, how people uh, go and become an entrepreneur, what it means to work for yourself. Um, you know, it's really, really um, important to just sort of make that part of their life as well. Make how you earn money. I mean, don't always be saying we can't afford that, but, you know, it's just like, is that a good use of our money, do you think? And get them to decide together with you. Um, and then electronics, of course, the um, communication that is uh, is there for us if we want to use it. I mean, I don't know, honestly, how I would have survived emotionally if I had not been able to um, contact uh, my family while I was on my recent Greek cruise. I mean, every day. I didn't get, I didn't do FaceTimes every day, but I did a video. Hi guys, here I am in Athens and we're going to do this today. And then they would sign back and say, have fun. Or, you know, it's like we didn't do phone calls every day, but yeah, use the technology that you can. Zoom, Skype, FaceTime. Um, we actually should do some courses on that, or not courses, but our articles on that so you can understand Instagram, TikTok, what, where they are. They are on those places. If you want to be, you know, understanding, not necessarily following them, but, um, you know, just know what they're doing. Um, you know, there, there's a certain uh, truth, though, to getting uh, or beauty to getting something in the mail. So oh, send care packages. You know, if you're living in another city, um, you send a little care package. You know, if it's seasonal, like what might be Easter, get some things for, for the season and pop it in a bag or box. A little care package is really sweet when it arrives. I used to send um, my grandson Jack a lot, a lot of uh, books and things, uh, but now it's all electronic. So, but, you know, little care packages are nice ideas. Um, I mentioned photos and videos. Those are good ways to communicate. Uh, read books together. There's something, I'm looking at my notes here. One's called FaceTime Storytime. 
And another one's called Story Time Together. I didn't know about these, but Lois mentions them in her article. And this is where you, like you're both reading a book and you go online to, and read it together. Like if you're in, you know, New York and your grandson is, or daughter's in San Francisco, you can read the book together, literally, not read it and discuss it, but read it virtually together. Uh, play games together. And there's all kinds of ones that she mentions, word, words with friends. Um, we've been having fun with, um, uh, what's that one called? Uh, Time's Up. You know, where you have to describe, like, you know, this is a whatever it is, you describe it, and they have to guess. You can do that on online. I mean, then you show them the card. It was a, you know, a bus or whatever. Uh, create a memory book or an album, she suggests. Create a memory box. Like things, I mean, and, and just be aware, though, that something you think is, is precious may not be to them. Because I know when I was in Greece, I was like, thinking of buying, you know, necklaces and bracelets. I bought a little, little Greek bracelet. But um, that would not be of interest. You know, they want, like, something that's more, you know, more... Even if it says not made in Greece, they would want something that's precious to you shared with them. So those are some ideas for how to be a long distance grandmother, how to redefine yourself, redesign yourself as a, as a grandmother in these amazing times. Use the technology, use your creativity, and uh, don't be worried if you're not there every minute of the day with them. They will remember you and um, you know, treasure the memories that you create with them. Some work, but you have to do it and try. It's worth it. Even small things matter. What do you do? If you're living apart from your grandkids, what kind of techniques do you use to stay in touch? I'd love to know. I need some ideas too. <laughs> Take really good care, everybody. Have a fabulous day.